What is going on everybody, it's your boy Nothing With Skills, and in today's video we're going to be showing you 10 things you need to know about Title Update 6. So if you don't really know too much about it, and you heard that we got a really big update in the Division 2 a couple weeks ago, well this video is for you. So let's dive into the 10 things you need to know about Title Update 6. Now to start off this video, let's talk about one of my favorite changes to Title Update 6 targeted farming. Now targeted farming is probably one of the best things they have done to Division 2 since its release. Now the great thing about this is if you're looking for a particular piece, like right here, a DNH, well you would farm that mission. If you're looking for mask, well you would farm these control points and so on. This has been the easiest way to rebuild my builds after all the big changes. One thing I've noticed is farming for weapons and missions seems the best way to get any weapon you want of that particular class. So if you're looking for a FAMAS with high damage, well, you might wanna farm the assault rifles. If you're looking for a particular sniper rifle, well, if it's on a mission, you might wanna farm that mission. And it's been a great way for me to rebuild my builds, get new weapons in a short amount of time. So if you feel that maybe it's too late for you to get back in the game or even start this game, Title Update 6 is definitely the perfect time for you to get into the Division 2 or come back to Division 2 because farming has never been easier. Now the DZ got some love with the DZ vendor. Now in one of the two normalized DZs, there will be a thief in there that is a vendor. Now this vendor will always have one piece, one gear piece with the perfect talent and then we'll have almost every single gear set in the game. So all the green gear sets you can purchase at least one of them. Now all of these items do require DZ materials, right? So you cannot use credits, you have to use DZ materials. And there's a lot of really good items in here that do reset daily. So you do have to check this daily as the Occupy Zone rotates the DZ vendor will rotate to. Now to find the location of these then, you need to find these terminals in the normalized DZ. Now once you find them, they will give you different locations of other terminals or containers like you see the one that I am picking right now. Now as soon as you get all of these 100% complete, it will say Thieves Den Unlock and give you the coordinates for the Thieves Den in the normalized DZ. But once you find the Thieves Den and you find the thief himself, well, you need materials, right? Well, these materials can be found in material boxes in the DZ. And not only in these boxes, you can also find them from killing NPCs in the Occupied Zone. Yes, if you go to the Occupied Zone, you will have a chance of them dropping one to two DZ resources in this area. So remember, boxes and NPCs both have a chance of giving you those DZ resources. Just make sure you collect them and that's all you have to do. The third thing you need to know is the recalibration station got a huge overhaul. Yes, it got a huge overhaul and crafting or recalibrating has never been easier. Now, if you have a gear piece, say this brand set DH and it has an offensive roll here, we can roll this for a blue. So if we wanna put hazard protection, we can do that. If we wanna roll health, we can do that. If we wanna put a utility on here, so a skill roll, we can do that. We can add skill haste, we can add skill power, whatever you wanna roll, you can roll on this piece. So yellows can be rolled for blues, blues can be rolled for reds, and it doesn't even matter. Another great thing they added is, now you do not have to have the item on you. If it's in your stash space, you can recalibrate from that item. So you no longer have to have the item on you. As long as it's in your stash base, you're good to go. The fourth thing you need to know is stacking talents is no longer a thing in the Division 2. So you no longer get stack vital on two pieces. You can no longer stack hardened on two pieces. You can no longer stack hard hitting on all six pieces. These are considered unique talents. So these talents can no longer be stacked on multiple pieces. You can have one hard hitting, you can have one hardened, you can have one critical, you can have one surgical. You can only stack one of these on your build. So each one of these talents, these unique talents, one per build. The fifth thing you guys need to know is crafting materials got a huge buff. So now every box that you open will drop the specific two types of crafting materials from that box. So for instance, you guys remember electronics and ceramics being so hard to farm back in the Delta? 
Well, if you find the box that goes with that, you will always get both electronics and ceramics. Now, not only that, we got a huge buff to the amount of materials we can carry. I think it used to be 400, now it's 1500. So a big, nice little chunk that you can start to save up so you no longer have to keep farming for materials every single day. Now, if you do save up, you can use them when you need to, when you're gonna recalibrate or when you're gonna craft an item. The sixth thing you guys need to know is perfect talents were added to the game. Now on your gear pieces, you have things like perfect concussions where headshots grant 20% headshot damage or you get 20% weapon damage to spotted enemies. Perfect spotter. These perfect talents are on almost every piece of gear set. Now, one thing you do need to keep in mind is you cannot roll these perfect talents onto any other piece. But say for instance, if you have a backpack with perfect tech support, you can still roll something for the other talent that's on there. But the perfect talent itself cannot be rolled off. You can only roll onto that piece. So that's what makes these perfect talents unique. You might get perfectly unbreakable, but it's going to be on a badger tough chest. So there's pros and cons to using these perfectly talents. The seventh thing you guys need to know is Manning National Zoo is now a stronghold. It's no longer just a mission. And with that being, and with that, it can also become invaded. And when you play an invaded mission like Manning National Zoo, it's totally different than the regular version of it when it's not invaded. So definitely something that you guys should try out. The eighth thing I think you guys should know is the UI system for Title Update 6 got a huge overhaul. Now, when we're examining our weapons, on the left-hand side, we can see the current damage and the RPM of that weapon. It doesn't stop there. When you go into the stats, if you're looking for your weapon damage and you want to know how do you have that type of weapon damage on your SMG, well, you can see everything on the right side that says breakdown and you can see everything affecting the SMG damage where right here I have all these offensive system firearm mods. I also have talents that are affecting it and I have bonuses from my brand sets that are affecting my damage. Now this also works with critical hit chance. It shows you every piece that's giving you a bonus to your critical hit chance. It shows everything that's giving you a bonus to your critical hit damage, your headshot damage, anything that is affected on your build on the right hand side, it's gonna tell you exactly what piece is doing it, what mod is doing it, and what brand set is doing it. And I think this is great for people who are learning to create builds and really keep track of where you're getting that extra critical hit chance, critical hit damage, or weapon damage on your build. They also made it really simple to change the die on all of your weapons at once, on all of your gear at once. So if you go to the apparel tab, you go to the bottom right hand side where the little spray paint can is, you can select that die for all of your gear in one place that die for all of your weapons in one place instead of having to select each piece and dying each piece separately number nine is loadouts got a lot of love in title update six now you can select up to 12 different loadouts and not only that your loadouts will also change your specialization so say for instance if you're running a build with demolitionist and you want to switch to your sniper build with sharpshooter, you can do that in your loadout menu. You no longer have to go back to the base of operation to change these. So you do have to do it initially when you first log into title update six, but once you set everything up from now on, if you have one specialization with a certain loadout, it will automatically change in your loadout menu. And now at number 10, something so many people were asking for, vendors got a nice little buff before what you could usually buy at these vendors were junk right you really wouldn't buy anything from these vendors it was pretty much a waste shopping at these vendors but this all changed in title update six now remember there is a vendor in the base of operation there's also the clan vendors there's also a vendor at each dark zone right at the entrance there's one at the campus and one at the theater settlement, plus you have the one thief vendor and you have Casey Mendoza. Once you find Snitch, he will give you the location for her. But let's take a look at this level 30 clan vendor. Look at this. We have an LMG with a perfect talent on there, 
We have three green we have three gear sets on there. So we have True Patriot, Aces and Eights, another True Patriot. We have level 500 weapons. So everything so far has been level 500. We have a skill mod on here and then we also have a utility mod on here. So a big big buff to level 30 clan vendors and clan vendors in general so those are the 10 need to know things i think you guys need to know and if there's something that i missed that you think came with title update 6 that i might have not mentioned let me know in the comment section don't forget there are two new missions starting with the pentagon and you can actually have access to this by heading to the chopper that you used to take to the raid don't forget kenley college is back in the rotation so one week on, two weeks off, one week on, and that will be the rotation for Kenley College. And that's from episode one, but it was reintroduced in episode two. But that wraps up this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Thank you guys again for all the support. Leave a thumbs up if you found this video useful. And as always, I do really appreciate you guys supporting this channel. And I appreciate everything you guys have done for me. Until the next Division 2 video, nothing but skills is out.